So welcome to my third lecture on Nainhaus geometry. Let me start with a short recap of the first two lectures. So the setup is the one which we discussed in the first lecture and which we repeat. Uh, so Nainhaus geometry starts manifold equipped with Nainhaus operators. So manifold is smooth and there is one one tensor living on this in this Nainhaus condition. So in the study, in the theoretical part of the study, no other structures are assumed, but then one uh, use the result or may use the result combination with character structures, structures which are also differential geometric, but are related to the nine house structure by some system of geometric condition, in many cases written in system of PDE. So uh, this, uh, your ninth field geometry study was in particular done in lecture one and two, and a partial outcome of the lectures one and two is that we understood the local structure and also partially global results about GL regular nine house operators. The word GL regular, uh, it will be repeated uh, during the talk, and I will give the definition once more because in lecture two, the definition was very, very fast. Now, is, uh, in first two uh, lectures as partner structure, I took only one very specific example, a classical example, example which was uh, considered already by in 18th century by, by Lagrange, and it is geodesically compatible metric G. And the result I presented as kind of uh, application of new science to old objects is I described old pairs GNL near generic point and also globally in dimension two, and also formulated some result in higher dimensions. So this is what we have done. We will still do a uh, nine house geometry, but we will consider another partner structure. So uh, nine house operators have natural, natural objects associated to them. So there are some uh, object algebraically related to nine house operator, and we did consider uh, them in the first two lectures. So given a operator, a matrix, one can speak about eigenvalues, eigenvectors, coefficient for this polynomial, and all of them came in the first two lectures. I will call them of algebraic nature. So no derivative I inside, it's just algebraic object constructed by nine house operator. As the, the topic of this lecture and the next one, are natural differential geometric object associated to nine house operator. They are constructed just by the background nine house structure, but the way to construct is not pure linear algebra or algebra, but it is differential geometry. The two of them come as a particular important examples. Uh, something called conservation laws. The word sounds physical and the original is comes from physics but it will be, of course, pure mathematical treatise. And then in the next lecture, I will speak about symmetries of nine house operator. The word uh, conservation laws or symmetries do not say anything about just the words are maybe not well uh, chosen, but it's not me who changed the words, but previous people. So the application for this lecture is integration quadratures of certain system of hydronomic type, of course, define uh, what are system of dynamic type and just program, pro problem minimum for you would be understand what a system of dynamic type, then maybe what is constraint laws and further maximum would be understand the whole lecture. So the, let us come to the program minimum and this is definition a system of hydrodynamic type. So it is a system, it is a system of partial differential equation and the system of n, n is dimension of the manifold, partial differential equations on n unknown functions. So known functions are used, u1, u, un, uh, they are function of two variables. So the two uh, variables, so, the, the, uh, so you can think that this, the system is on surfaces because there are two variables, but it would be a wrong, uh, it would be correct mathematically, but wrong, wrongly philosophically viewpoint. And this is the system. So the T derivative of UI 
is equal to the matrix A multiplied by the X derivative of, of U. So previously I used the letter X just also for coordinates on the manifold. This time is over, X is only one dimensional coordinate. So traditionally called X, the coordinate of the manifold will be called by U now. Actually U have play the role of coordinate of the manifold. Uh, this is the formula kind of written completely. Summation is assumed and this is short form. A is a matrix and uh, derivative of U respect to T is matrix A multiplied by derivative of U respect to X. Uh, this property uh, of this uh, kind of part is that uh, A may depends on U, but there is no explicit dependence of T of X. So A is a, metric, a matrix field on a manifold with local coordinate U1, Un. So there is no dependence on T and X explicitly in the formula. Actually, this unknown function U1, Un should be viewed, we'll view it as local coordinate system of a manifold. In this case, the matrix A is actually operator field. So one, one tensor field, because it is very easy exercise. If you replace the unknown function by a diffeomorphism, then the derivative, uh, so, so the, 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 this difference comes here, comes here because it stays on the derivative, the uh, superposition rule will imply Jacobi matrix appearing here and here, and altogether it implies that new, the system remains to be a system of higher dynamic type, but the new matrix A will be related to the old matrix A by the one one tensor transformation rule. So in the system of such type, U is natural to see as coordinate to the manifold, on A is natural to see as one one tensor. So let me uh, put a few pictures. And one of the picture is here. So we have a two dimensional place where coordinates T X leaves. Coordinate T and X are not symmetric. So T is a special role, X is a special role. Yeah, so it's really some fixed coordinates. And uh, we are looking for a mapping of this in the n dimensional manifold coordinates U such that the system is satisfied. It is one of the of the interpretation, yeah? So uh, the initial data is then we specify one curve and then we would like to kind of construct the whole surface by, by this data. But actually I would prefer and suggest you to see the system of dynamic type as a dynamical system, as infinite dimensional dynamical system, let us do it together. So the uh, view, viewpoint is as follows. So particles in the finite dimensional system, it's infinite dimensional analog, are curves of X. So we have initial curve, U of X, and this is the, the initial data. And then uh, our uh, system is that the T derivatives of U of, uh, of, the, of uh, our U, with respect to X are expressed in the terms of U of U. So uh, D by DT U is, well, I write an expression, but it's very, very special expression uh, of U. It con contains all information of U because also contains an X derivative of the curve X, but it's really given in the term of position of the particle, is if location of the curve is position of the particle, yeah? And then uh, uh, if we restrict ourselves to the real analytic setup, it's not necessary, one can do a similar statement in a more general setup, but let us assume real analytics just to not, not to go to technical difficulties. For any initial data, there exists unique uh, local solution by Kovalevsky theorem. Yeah? So this system of equation is uh, of Kovalevsky, Kovalevsky, Kovalevsky type, and with the uh, real analytic initial data, there always exists uh, its solution. Yeah? So I put here kind of comparison between usual or, or, or ordinary differential equation 
and our system of partial differential equation. So they optically look kind of similar, do they? But here is simply a function on the point. And here, well, it is special uh, function, special value, special but explicit function on the curve, yeah? And yes, derivative is vector field. And here, well, the people doing uh, hydrocytic infringement type call this also infinite dimensional vector field. There are indeed many similar. Now, uh, solution e with initial data is a curve such that at every point it is tangent to, to the vector field X. Solution of this particular curve is a family of curve parameterized by T such that the vector field uh, along the curve in the natural interpretation is just given by this formula. So uh, the name suggests that the system came in problem hydrodynamics and it's indeed the case. So uh, the terminology was suggested by Peter Lux and he really uh, uh, sources uh, system in the uh, hydrodynamical uh, background, the hydrodynamical theory. So in the theory, it appears the theory of different waves, so dispersive waves, shock waves. Uh, in mathematics, it's natural kind of PDEs, and first time this PDE appears already in the work of Riemann, but in dimension two. So let me do not touch physics here, but I will give two mathematical examples, so two mathematical situations where the system appears naturally without us asking it to be appear. It simply does, it's simply there. And the first example, it is well known. So the Cauchy Riemann condition, which you definitely saw it in this form, u and v are un unknown or functions of two variables x and y, can be clearly written in this matrix form. Yeah? It is just the same form, but rewritten such that it is uh, in the hydrodynamic type system form. Yeah? So this is a system of dynamic type with n equal to two, the operator one one tensor a in this case is extremely simple. It is the uh, constant operator. Well, it's still nine house operator because constant operator and nine house operator is also GL regular because when you, you will see it when I give the definition of GLRT, but uh, yes. Uh, in this example, which appeared by itself without kind of looking for it. Uh, a is simple. Let us, let me throw on the whiteboard a mathematical setup where A is uh, more uh, complicated. So this is again the example which appeared uh, just by itself without me to ask. So the problem where it appears is as follows. We can see the two-dimensional remaining metric and it is known that the metric can be given in conformal coordinates. I think it was uh, recalled in the lecture of about discrete, conform, discrete, discrete surfaces, yeah? Remember these names. Uh, so we view lambda as one of the unknown uh, uh, function. And now let us look for an integral f of the geodetic flow, which is homogeneous in momentum degree three. So I don't really want to give details of definition, but the condition that f is integral means some system of PDE, and the condition that it's homogeneous in momentum degree three by known result, result is due to Kolkoitsov, means that uh, f, so given by this form, P a momentum, the coordinate of cotangent bundle. So unknown function here A and B. So the fact that here stays A and stays, here stays B is a consequence of some result of Kolokoitsa, which I don't want to discuss. Then the condition is that F is integrable for geodetic law of G. So F commute with Hamiltonian of H is then a system of the hydrodynamic type on the unknown function, which is the conformal coefficient of the metric, and both unknown function comment in the representation of the function f with a matrix A. 
So U1, U2, U3 here are now called lambda A and B. The coordinate uh, T and X are now called X1 and X2. And the message of this uh, slide is that in this natural problem, the matrix of A is very complicated. Yeah? Nine chaos is not zero anymore, but, but, but it is also a system which appears somewhere. Uh, it's not nine chaos operator, but uh, it is related to nine chaos geometry. I cannot, I don't explain uh, how, but uh, you see that there are also naturally a system of hrenaric types which appear in mathematics with uh, complicated case. So uh, what does integrability mean in this context? Let me recall definition in the finite dimensional case and then uh, go to the infinite dimensional case. There are many definitions, they're not always equivalent. The established definition or one of established definition is the follows. If you consider ordinary international equation system, just the flow vector field, we call that integrable if it has sufficiently many function which are constant on the solutions. So this number of functions k minus one, all objects which are considered are thought to be independent. So not that f number cap minus one is uh, f uh, num equal to f number two, for example. And vector fields, uh, uh, which are called w, which commute with v. They also should be somehow independent on the function f. In the finite dimensional case, integrability implies under some non-degenerate assumption, which I did not specify, uh, that one re can reduce the solving of the system U dot equal to V of U. So of course, locally, the system can always be solved as usual ordinary transgression, but one really to want to find solution in, uh, in, in formulas, yeah? Uh, so by integration of closed one forms and solving the system of functional equations. In fact, this is out as uh, more or less explicitly formulated in uh, the book of Sophus Lee, uh, but in the Russian, um, uh, in the Soviet mathematics, it's called Arnold Kozlov theorem, and it did appear somewhere in the joint survey of Arnold Kozlov. Uh, so this is the established definition in the finite dimensional game, uh, case. So let me now speak about infinite dimensional case. There exists also an established definition, which is visually similar to the finite dimensional case. There is also a collection of methods to deal with integral dimensional system. I will comment uh, on some of these methods in my first lectures. But unfortunately, in most cases, this collection of methods doesn't help. So one can apply it, but it simply reduce one problem to another one which still cannot be solved. One can argue the second one is easier, but I mean, if none of them can be solved, they are equally easier for me, equally, equally hard for me. So in my lecture, I will call system of clinic type, in this lecture, next one, integrable, if one can integrate in quadratures for most initial data, or at least for sufficiently many initial data. So integrable in quadrature means that one can reduce solving the system, the system of PDE, so a complicated one, to uh, integration of close to one forms, which is very cheap operation in any sense, it can be done explicitly in many sense, and solving system of algebraic relations. Yeah, This is notion of integrability for my lectures. This is indeed the, what the classical people wanted for the integral system. They didn't want the method, they wanted the answer. Uh, well, as I said, other no, no, uh, uh, notions of integrability used in literature. So the, the example we have shown with uh, polynomial integral, you remember there was some kind of nasty three by three matrix A, yeah? Theoretically is integrable in the sense of a notion used in literature, but nobody found uh, a solution or nobody reduced solution to anything which is, which, which, which is uh, kind of tractable. And actually the list of known integral system of dynamic time in the sense of my definition is very short. In all known cases, the operator A is diagonal coordinate system. I will give this list on the next slide. So the simplest and trivial example is if A itself is nine house operator with n different eigenvalues. In fact, we did have this example already because this Kasha-Riemann equation, the equation for function to be holomorphic, 
the uh, generator matrix of it is nine chaos. It has constant entry. Then this equation can be integrated in quadratures. Let me do it. Let me explain the power of nine chaos geometry in this special example. The proof is not mine. It's just folklore. It was done by, by hope at least. Yeah? Not, not by hope, but by luck at least. So uh, we know that the system is invariant. So if we can change the coordinate system, then L is changed to one one tensor. And by Hunter's theorem, which was uh, described discussed in the first lecture, one can therefore work in the coordinate system such that L is diagonal and each diagonal is stays the corresponding coordinate. So the system equation is appears to be this one. So first, it is just U are only coordinates. So the first equation is the derivative of T of the first coordinate is first coordinate multiplied derivative of first coordinate by X, yeah? You see that the system is completely decouples. Second system does not see U1. So one can solve each of the system separately, yeah? So one really need to solve any of the system, any of this equation, and this can be done. So one can do it in quadratures. I kind of uh, do not do it at this point, but I will do it in lecture four because it will be, it comes as an example in uh, modern construction, construction, and you will see that, I mean, but even now you believe that, that the system start to be very simple. Uh, the another known case uh, are so-called bi-Hamiltonian systems. They're also integrable. So the word bi-Hamiltonian probably known to you. So the person who introduced the word is Hanka Magri. But in this context, the integrability of Bigton structure understand, the understanding is due to uh, paper Dubrovin Novikov and then additional paper of Tsarev. I will speak about results of Tsarev in the uh, next lecture. Many examples of bi hamiltonian system of type were constructed by Frank Madri and his co-author, and I also mentioned one theorem which they almost obtained. And the next uh, short known example is so-called weakly nonlinear integral system of linear types, central in my case, and this is a uh, result of Evgeny Ferropontov of, of that period. Two papers on this period, on this period as well. So nine house geometry allows us to analyze or result to non-diagonal regular operators. G regular is underlined because I want to recall the definition. And uh, historically, it was really done very, very recently. So when Ellis G regular nine house operator, it was done, the paper was just published, maybe still not published, but online first version. Uh, Non-diagonal big examples were constructed in uh, our paper of 21 and I will uh, speak about them in the next lecture. So the remaining part of this lecture, so I gave the definition, now let me solve the problem, it will be about non-diagonal analogy of weakly nonlinear linear regular case. So basically I will generalize the result of Ferropontov to all uh, also non-diagonal situation and uh, there will be important notion of nine house geometry which, which appeared uh, uh, on the way. So I start with GL regular non hesperator L with some constant eigenvalues. Uh, again, the integrality will be defined, but when we define, we'll re remember that we actually locally describe them in the first <coughs> two lectures. Uh, we can see that PDE system uh, of this form with a very special generator matrix A. So it is just one A, it is inverse of L, multiplied by determinant of L. This is actually quite nice object because, um, because uh, L, this defined also is L itself is singular because the only problem to inverse the matrix is that divide by determinant and happily we will do multiply by determinant. So it is more or less co matrix of the OL but transpose to make it one one tensor. So I will explain how to solve this PDE in quadratures using integration of closed one form and solving system of functional equation. And if time allows, but I don't think so, I will speak about finite dimensional reduction of such system. Uh, the system with this A is just one system, but it is an important system. So it appears indeed naturally in many problems in physics, 
especially in finite dimensional reduction of infinite dimensional data systems. So, for example, finite get solution of KDV can be returned to third solution of the system. This was a big story in the 80s. Uh, there were competition between different schools. So, in Soviet schools, Dubrovin, in uh, Western schools, it was the mother. It's also true for many other systems. It's really, there are many systems. Probably you, I don't even want to read their names, but there are systems which are named system. And for each of them, there are big, many papers where, in particular, one look for finding a solution. In all the case, the solution came, came, comes to, to this system of hermetic type. So let me now define general regularity. So it is a linear algebraic definition. So one, one tensor. A matrix view in as endomorphism operator L is called G regular if one of the following equivalent condition hold. The simplest condition is the general normal form of L contains exactly one general block for each eigenvalue. Every eigenvalue has geometric multiplicity precisely one. The more fancy condition, which I comment, uh, which is equivalent one, which I comment on the, on the same uh, on the next slide, is that the dimension of uh, orbit with respect to the natural action of the group GL and R is maximal, and maximal means it has maximal dimension. In this case, dimension is square minus, minus n. Yeah? So let me just make the picture in dimension two. Uh, I think a similar picture appeared in one of the first lecture on anti sitter geometry. Yeah? And we can see the two by two matrices with determinant one, and we looked on uh, Eigenvalues of when the on eigenvalues of the of the matrix. So there are only well one, actually two matrices within the family uh, are such that uh, A is proportional to identity matrix. That's why we have one point here. Now the uh, generic orbit responds to two different eigenvalues and they form in this three-dimensional space such hyperboloids. Yeah. So these are hyperboloids with real eigenvalues, and these hyperboloids are with complex eigenvalues. And German block, so when we jump from a hyperboloid with two complex eigenvalues to, to real eigenvalues, uh, they called vertical transformation in the terminology of Arnold, are this, these cones, yeah? So this kind of light cones in the sense of uh, relativity. And so uh, they are in this picture, uh, GL regular operators are uh, pff, all of all but in dimension two, it's all by but 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 uh, but scalar, yeah, but operators which are identity multiplied by constant. So, why the regular condition? The condition is, is uh, generic, so it is more generic that having different eigenvalues. It's one dimension more, no, no it n dimension more generic condition having more eigenvalues. It still allows journal blocks, it still allows differentiation of eigenvalues, uh, similar points. Now, in lecture four, I discuss hardograph method, and it will need GR regularity, so without it simply doesn't work. Now, uh, all example in the literature we found. Uh, in particular, the two mathematical examples I, I discussed in the beginning of the work, talk, Kasher Riemann and existing linear well, as I assume in the Kasher Riemann or satisfy G regularity. So, matrix A, which was constructed for uh, the second problem, it was complicated matrix. Doesn't matter what A, B, and lambda you take, it is, it is necessarily G regular. So, uh, now uh, the second uh, kind of Definition of my talk, which you try to take with you, is configuration load. So let A be uh, operator, it's any not necessary in house. By configuration law, we understand a function. So configuration law as object is a function on our manifold. So our manifold is in the terms of a system of types, it is with low coordinates y, y, u1, un, f such that. Uh, if you apply A on differential of F, then we still obtain a closed form. So what does it mean? So A is operator, A star is a natural uh, dual operator acting on the uh, 
cotangent uh, bundle. So A star X on cotangent bundle um, is defined by the only possible way a star of uh, covector applied to V is covector applied to A times V. In the matrix notation, uh, it multiplies the uh, the covector by A from the other side. So transpose here is a mistake, so it's a misprint. So it just multiplies A uh, from, 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 the, from the other side. So it's natural to write covector as strings, not like as uh, columns, and then it multi multiply from the side the string can be multiplied. Uh, the word conservation law, the word conservation, the part conservation of the phrase conservation law will explain on the next slide. Uh, the infinite dimension analysis integrals functions which are constant trajectories for finite and dimensional interval systems. Uh, the name is misleading. The first example of conservation laws were related to the term conservation laws used in physics, in thermodynamics, and the name survives. The word conservation is okay, the word law has nothing to do. Yes? No, no, no. So it's not it's not the same. So differential the differential would be the, would be so uh, D is differential. So it is condition which 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 has derivative of N inside, and you suggested only near the break condition. Yeah. So if you write it as a system of PDE, then the condition is. I think you take the mm, no. Wait, I, I, I will do. I will do it wrong. So let me just. But it, it's a, it's a condition on. Uh, so it 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 if a is fixed, of course, it's condition on on f only. But also, it's it's use a second derivative of f. Uh, uh, okay, let us just uh, comment on the word conservation. So let M is manifold, uh, suppose M is, is manifold and A is operator. Now consider the, the initial curve, but a very special initial curve, uh, closed initial curve, so mapping from S1 to Mn. I will call closed curve loops. It is uh, one legal initial curve, yeah? And it is just given by this formula where X is now periodic coordinate P period 2 P or 1, it just depends on taste. Here yeah, I put P. Okay. And then consider the quasi-linear equation, the equation of hydrodynamic type, uh, starting from uh, this curve as the initial curve. I mean, it's clearly remains to be the loop all the time, at least it exists, so there is will be some uh, kind of evolution of one key parametric family of loops. Next, uh, for the fun for function G, this function G, Will be uh, will play the role of conservation quantity. Uh, law we can see the natural function on the loop space defined by this process. A loop gamma, closed curve gamma, is mapped to integral. The circle here means that we do the cyclic integral, yeah, uh, over the gamma. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't depend when. So parameter is important, but doesn't depend what what is the initial point of g of gamma of x dx. X remember that it was always parameter of my curve. And this is for every closed loop, it is a number. So if you have family of loops parameterized by time t, then we have a number parameterized by some time t. So proposition, the functional, uh, this functional, or actually the function as a density. So in fact, I speak about conservation law being a function. And normally I should speak about conservation laws being functional of special form. Is conservation law? If only, only if for every solution u, this value does not change during evolution in t. So, no, no, no. So we start with a loop in x. So the coordinate here is x, and given the loop, 
we constructed this number. Now, uh, starting with this loop, we consider our system ut is equal to ux with this loop as initial thing. We consider a family of loops yeah, in t. And for each of element of the family, if you just take any cylinder, then for a, the, 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 the integral will depend on t, but for g satisfying the equation I have written, so for g being conservative uh, conservation law, uh, this, 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 this functional is constant. So it is functional special form constant along uh, flow. And well, okay, I called function, so the density of functional conservation law, but it's just because otherwise I need to speak, tell too many words. So this is a proposition, once more, just simply copy it. You remember the convention of my lecture that I copy the result I need from the previous slides and put it in the box. And let me just prove it because I wanted to prove something and this would be one of the statements I'm going to prove today. So we differentiate by T, this guy, and now the usual rule of differentiated of uh, under integral is we differentiate under integral, yeah? Now derivative with respect of T of G of U is uh, the dg by du multiplied by u and sum over i. It is just the, the usual rule of differentiated function dependent of many variables, each of them depends of t. Now, uh, u t is replaced by my equation. It is done by here. We have sum of i here. We have sum <coughs> over j here. Yeah? So I did nothing up to now. Uh, now, uj dx is duj. Yeah, it is usual calculus, calculus uh, just with, with you. And then uh, you see that it is, uh, this guy is simply a star, and this is a star component applied. So it is integral of the form a star d, d, dj, and it is zero if and only if the form is closed. Yeah? So this was a proof that uh, conservation law indeed preserved in the correct sense along the evolution. So in this lecture, we will study conservation laws of nine hertz operators only, and they will be sufficient for our solution of uh, uh, the system we consider. So uh, I need one theorem. It uh, uh, was known. If f is conservation law for nine hundred L, then conservation law for LK for any K. It is property of nine house geometry, it's not true for any. Let us take it as granted. So and if you take it as granted, then starting with one conservation law, then construct infinite many of them, from which we need, will need only first n. So F1 just is F, the one, F2 is given by this solution, as you as I just formulated here. Uh, F1 itself is conservation law, so L star of uh, DF1 is closed form, this gives F2. F2. Addition of constant doesn't really matter for us, so this is, this. and so on. So we get hierarchy of uh, conserv conservation laws, starting with the one, we have hierarchy. Our first new result is log description of conservation laws for GL regular nine hertz operator. I should first give family of examples, and then claim explains that there are no other example. So the family of example will be given by the principle which I announced in my I think, second lecture. It is general splitting principle. Once nine house separator splits in front of your block and it always splits as you know, it is splitting lemma, the associated objects are also split. So let me just uh, form a kind of give this result for uh, this uh, for our case, consider already split G regular operator. So it's block diagonal, the blocks L1 and K, you know that the nine house and you know that they depends on their own coordinates. Then every conservation law for L is the sum H1, HK, where HI depends only on the coordinate of the corresponding block and is conservation law for corresponding LI. 
So if L is the sum of nine health separator, coefficient law is the sum of consolidation laws. So by theorem, theorem in order to describe coefficient law for G regular nine health separator, it is sufficient to describe the laws for L, which is conjugate to German block. So G regularity means that there is no cases of two German blocks and one dimensional operator is also conjugate to a trivial German block. So I will explain how it works in diagonal case and then go on the full generality. So dimension one, the has operator with the constant eigenvalue is just u du d by du. Yeah, I mean, it's one one matrix with the only empty u. So any function is coefficient law because any one form is closed. And then the hierarchical form is given by h integral of psi h prime of psi dx i integral of psi square h prime of psi dx i and so on. So it is easy for uh, for dimension one. Now for main dimension, assuming the operator is diagonalizable, we simply have the product. Any coefficient law is given by the formal form. We have n function one variables to choose. And then they give the whole hierarchy, but iterating this formula in any coordinate. So for general block, situation is slightly more complicated, and I may start to have a problem with time again. So uh, here there will be some formula. The message of the slide, and I jump over the formula very fast, so you don't have time to follow, is that we do have a formula for conservation law. There is simply a formula, yeah? So believe it that there is one because later I will use it also only as a black blackboard. So the success report is that uh, we describe it all pairs, GL regular nine hair separator, it's all of conservation laws, include all hierarchy decision laws near almost every point. Steven Lehman describes uh, all GL regular operators and theorem, theorem above is tried to the laws and did not show the exact formula in general block case, but believe me, there exists a formula. So let me go to the integral system for, uh, of chronic uh, type, which I promised to discuss. So uh, suppose L is GL regular non operator and then define one one tensor AI via the following formula. It is not determinant of L multiplied by L minus one, which was posed before, but it is a polynomial in lambda given in, when we, so instead of L, we consider lambda identity minus L, yeah? So it is just comatrix of uh, lambda identity minus L, so it's polynomial of degree N minus one, and we call the coefficient, which are matrices by A. A minus one, A N is the same identity, and this is the one we wanted to solve from the very beginning. So this is the main one, which I kind of announced, I can, so I can, I can consider, yeah? So we consider now uh, N polynomial. Theorem, uh, in this form proved in our paper, weaker form was done before. Uh, the systems of hernamic type corresponding to A1, AN are in volution, which means, it is old world volution, which means that as a system, if you consider all of them A's and take them as additional equation in the system, but with own time T, so unknown function is an unknown functions of T1, Tn, then the system is compatible. It would be a system of n square equations on still n variables. It's expected that it, for, for normal operators, for, for, you, for, standard, for, for generic operator A1, An, so it's not compatible, it has no solution. Uh, the, the theorem here says that it has solution, okay, to be formal for real analytic initial data, but in fact, actually for all data, but then it's not, not real theorem. Uh, so before we had special variable X, and actually the variable X is related to the variable TN, because the first equation in the system is here we have identity, so du by TNN is equal identity time du by dx. So X variable is just T, 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 N. So this is uh, for diagonal L, it was known, at least to Ferropontov, for arbitrary, the existence of such, 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 uh, well, the sweet result is due to Rizzoni Magri and the formula is in our paper. So let me go to the main theorem. 
let L is uh, be a GR regular equal operators and F1, Fn, the first N elements of hierarchy on converted flows. So DFI is a, is a star multiplied by DFI minus one. Yeah, hierarchy is we start with one and then use L to construct the next and next and next. Then near the points where function F1, Fn are functionally dependent, any vector valued function U satisfying our system, it is a whole system, not only one equation, is a solution of the, oh, so, so for any vector function satisfying this system is solution of our system. So uh, this is a great success, yeah? Because it solves the problem we wanted to solve. So look, uh, so the function fi, we know the conservative quantities and I described them in the previous slides, yeah? Now, uh, having one conservative quantity constructing hierarchy, one integrate closed one form. It is legal operation. What stays here is the algebraic equation. Okay, the data for this algebraic equation came from integration of one form, so given by probably complicated algebraic formula, but it's still algebraic equation. And so in the system, this is the system of N equation or N function of two variable with respect to the N function, give us uh, the function U, U1, UN of T1, Tn, which, and uh, the statement is that this way give us a solution and uh, yes, all almost all solution can be obtained by this form. So we reduce the solving of the PDE system to solving the system uh, of the PDE system, system here. And one of these PDEs was uh, the PDE we wanted and the other compatible. So it's uh, the, the adding of additional PDEs is not uh, changing the problem. So it still solves the initial problem by reducing it to integration of closed form and solving system of algebraic relation. Uh, so we may probably some, how much? So I probably start later, but how much? A few minutes you say. So everybody tight. It may be more than two minutes, but I will try to give the proof. I wanted to give the proof, yeah? And you stop me if I eat too long. Uh, it is the most part of the proof is linear algebra. And the first part of the linear algebra, uh, so takes hierarchy of uh, conservation laws and if they're independent, consider them a local coordinate system. So I, don't, I did nothing, yeah? Now in this local coordinate system, because F1, Fn are now coordinates, the derivatives are given by these covectors. So I said nothing, yeah? Which means that uh, the condition which one used to construct the uh, hierarchy, this condition implies that uh, L star, so multiplying this vector from left to our matrix L gives the second matrix, means that the first uh, row of the matrix is just a second matrix. So it gives that the matrix L has a full form, sigma n, sigma n minus one, sigma n, as some function which I don't know, but the previous part of the matrix L is known. Uh, now, I need one linear algebraic, uh, uh, linear algebraic statement. So for this L, consider our system, uh, consider our uh, A1, AN, do it for this L, yeah? So consider AN, well, then identity, but N minus one, which would stay here in this decomposition, so on. The linear algebra statement you possibly want to do yourself is that in this coordinate system, AI has last column, which is one of the place I and zero otherwise. It is linear algebra exercise, take this L and construct uh, AN by this formula. You will see that the last, the last column is given by this form. So it's a deep exercise, yeah, you can do it for the students. Now consider our system. And in our coordinate system, since the last column is just the basis vector, we have that AI applied to EN is AI. And this implies that the vector valued functions uh, given by the following formula. 
of the our system uh, star still because the d by di of this function is di. So this here kills, here kills, the only place with not kills is uh, i's place. So the condition, uh, this one in core reads down them fi is below, and this is more or less the same condition as stay here, maybe up to sign. So, so this condition of f i of n, we obtain what you want, and we see that in coordinate system, f one of n, every solution is solution of uh, uh, our initial system. So since our system is geometric, so the property of curve to be solution does depend on coordinate system. In any coordinate system, a solution of this, a solution of that, which, which prove the main theorem. So it is, was the last informative slide. So uh, the, the recap of this lecture is that we studied a natural differential geometric object associated to dynamic health system, computation laws. We described the system of computation laws for geodegal non health operators, and this is part which I did too fast. So we considered natural system types associated to non health operators. It is a system appears in many unrelated problems of mathematical physics. Uh, and for any hierarchy of precision law, we construct solution U of the system system equation. Now, since the freedom is correct, so the freedom of choosing configuration law is n function of one variable, and freedom of choosing initial data is also n function of one variable, for almost every initial curve, one construct the corresponding solution using this method, which gives us the complete solution of the problem which, uh, which, which I announced. So sorry for delay, I think it's still more or less in time. Thank you very much.